Hello students, this is Professor Vincent Usaya. Welcome to my class. This is part six of chapter 14 presentation. Chapter 14, long-term liabilities. In part five, we talk about the amortization of uh, discounts. And we said that the amortization of discounts wind up being additional interest expense, okay? Now, let's take a look at uh, using the effective uh, interest method. Still talking about the effective interest method, now let's take a look at the uh, amortization of premium. Here's a situation whereby we set the bond above power value or face value. Uh, we do that, as we know, uh, we talk about the relationship between the market interest rate and the uh, stated interest rate as the driving force as to whether a bond is going to be sold at discount, premium, or at the par value. So we are going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit because uh, um, uh, most of what uh, the most important uh, issues have been addressed in this area. So here's an example. Uh, here again, like we demonstrated, we calculate the present value of the single sum and the present value of the interest payment. Add it up, and the sale of the bond is 108 but the face value is 100000 So obviously we sold the bond $8,500 more than the uh, face value or power value. So the bond was issued or sold at premium. So what do we do with that premium? We amortize it over the life of the bond using the effective interest and method, just like we did for a uh, discount. So again, we use the present value table, and we talk about those interfaces as the present value of uh, the single sum present value of uh, the uh, interest payment, uh, add the two up and that will give you 108530 and uh, that is the selling price uh, of the bond. So we make the journal entries, so we debit cash for 108 and credit premium on bonds payable for 8530 and credit bonds payable for 100,000, just the opposite of uh, 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 a bond issued at a uh, discount. So of course, uh, we recognize the interest. As you can see, the cash interest payment, we credit card for $4,000. The interest expense this time is lower than the cash interest expense because uh, this bond was issued at premium. So the amortization of premium is reduces uh, uh, the interest expense. Again, like I said, just the opposite of uh, 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 amortization of uh, uh, a discount. So moving along, let's take a look at the accrued interest. Same thing, uh, 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 here uh, we discussed the accrued interest before, uh, in this case, uh, we debit the interest expense, and credit premium on bonds payable, and the interest payable. So of course, the premium on bonds payable uh, has to be uh, in proportion to the period that is applicable. So classification of this kind of premium. We also talk about this, our company re reports bond discount and bond premium as a direct deduction from or addition to the face value of the bond. We demonstrated that a few minutes ago. So here is uh, another issue altogether relative to valuation of bonds, cost of issuing bonds. This you need to know. Now what are we talking about here? Uh, these are the related cost of actually issuing the bond. You know, the printing, uh, uh, legal fees, so on and so forth. We said that uh, the cost of issuing the bond is treated as a deferred charge, meaning it is an asset. And then we amortize that amount over the life of the bond. So here is uh, an example that, the, uh, uh, that we have here, uh, illustration. M Corporation sold 20 million of 10 year differential bond for 20.79 uh, also uh, issuing cost 245,000 so here is the journal entry here most important thing is uh, on amortized bond issue cost is debit for 245,000 that is the issuing cost and it's a deferred charge it is classified as an asset then look at at the end of every year we make an adjustment just like we make other adjustment like depreciation adjustment, and so on and so forth. So bond issue cost is expense 
is debited for 24,500, just like the debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. However, on amortized bond issue cost here is uh, credited for uh, 24,500. So we do that and uh, get rid of the 245,000 over the life of the bond. Excuse me here. Okay, moving along, let's take a look at the uh, extinguishment of uh, debt. This is an exciting uh, and exotic uh, subject matter relative to uh, uh, long-term debt. So here's the situation. The company decided to go out and buy or pay off his debt. That is what we mean by extinguishment of debt. Here's an illustration. So in January 1, 2007, a G issued at 97 bonds, uh, issued at 97 bonds with a power value of 800,000 due in 20 years. It, it occurred, it incurred bond issue cost of 16,000. Eight years after the issue of the, after the issue date, uh, the company calls the enter issue at 101 and cancel it. Call it at 101, meaning paid off at 101, 101%, even though they issue it at 97. So they are paying more than they issue it for. And there are different reasons why a company want to do that. You can read that on your own. So look at the calculation. That's the most important thing here. So 800,000, which is the power value, multiplied by uh, one. 101%, that will give you $808,000. The first value is $800,000. However, the unamortized discount is $14,400 because the discount we have to back it out. Then the unamortized issue cost is $9,600. We need to back it out. So when you do the math, the current value or the book value is $776. So, if we have waited, so at that point in time, the value of our obligation is 776, but we wind up copying at 808. So, for a difference of $32,000. So, that $32,000 is a uh, loss on redemption, and it is recorded as such. So, here are the related journal entry. You can follow this on your own. So, moving along, let's take a look at... Uh, long-term note payable long-term note payable is another is the second example of long-term debt or long-term liability so like i told you earlier bond is a big deal it covers about 75 percent of uh, the whole chapter the long-term notes payable the same thing the only difference between uh, 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 the accounting kind of treatment of note payable and the bond payable pretty much similar. All right. The only difference here is for note payable, we are actually uh, putting in writing uh, the promise to pay X Y Z in three years, ten percent, so on and so forth. But uh, for bond payable, we have different denomination and we actually sell it to a lot of uh, 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 investors. So the accounting kind of treatment is the same. So we are not going to spend. Uh, time on that at all. So, note not issue at face value. So, this is important. This is what we call a zero interest bearing note. This is uh, quite interesting and uh, uh, and the name could be very misleading also. Zero interest bearing note. It sounds as if to say this note does not bear interest. That is really not what it means. Is, well, what, what he's saying here is on the face of the note, there is no interest rate indicated. And interest is not being paid periodically like every six months or every year. Hence, they call it zero interest bearing note. But in actuality, there is an interest element uh, to this uh, note. So here is an example. 
So this company issued a three year, 10,000 zero interest very note to Jeremiah company. The implicit rate that equated the total cash to be paid, 10,000 on maturity to present value of the future cash flow is 7,772. So what are we talking about here? So the first of the note said 10,000, meaning Ten thousand. There is no interest rate on the note. So the issuer of the note promised to pay ten thousand in three years, and the issuer of the note or the company received only seven seven two one eight zero. So the company received seven seven hundred. They are going to cover 10,000 in three years. So the difference between those two amounts actually is interest. All right? And that interest has to be recognized over the three years period. Uh, uh, so because there is no interest rate specified, so we call it zero interest bearing note, but actually is, it, it actually bears interest. Okay? So here's the journal entry. We credit notes payable for 10,000. We debit cash for 7721. The difference of 2278 is discount or not payable. And then uh, look at this schedule. Cash paid every year, zero. However, the 227820 cent uh, interest has to be allocated over three years period in order for the matching principle not to be uh, violated. All right? And then, as you can see, the current amount of the note increases every year based on the amortization of the discount, okay? So uh, here you have it. So the interest bearing note, pretty much comparable with uh, the accounting treatment of uh, bond payable. So we're not going to spend time on that at all, all right? Special notes payable situation. What are we talking about here? Here's a situation whereby we issue note for the purchase of a property or the purchase of goods or the purchase of some services, all right? Now, when we issue that note, the rule is the stated interest rate on that note is presumed to be fair unless, number one, no interest rate is stated. If no interest rate is stated, there is an issue there. Number two, the stated interest rate is unreasonable. And number three, the face amount is materially different from the current cash price for the same or similar items or from the current fair value of the debt instrument. So what does this mean? Let's take a look at uh, number one. Let's assume that we bought an equipment for $15,000, all right? And we issue a note promising to pay I or company XYZ promise to pay ABC $15,000 in three, it's a three year note, okay? All right? So, when we issue the note, for fifteen thousand dollars to pay in three years, a non-accountant or a non-accounting student would think that we are buying the equipment for fifteen thousand. We are not, because because payment is due in three years, there is an interest component to this fifteen thousand. So that would be an example of no interest rate is stated. So that we need to figure out what the interest the interest portion of this 15,000. So if the interest portion is 3,000, then the cost of the equipment is actually uh, 12,000 if the uh, uh, interest component is 3,000. So we are going to go ahead and talk about how to uh, do that uh, 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 in a few minutes. But suffice it to say here, this is a clear example of a consensus substance over form. In other words, what 
a transaction really is, is more important than the way it looks. So here, we issue a note for $15,000 for the purchase of an equipment. It looks as if we actually paid $15,000 for the equipment because that is how it looks, that is the form. But there is an interest element to this. Whatever that interest element is, we need to figure it out because substance is more important than the way the transaction actually look. So that would be the conclusion of, uh, I'm losing track, I guess uh, part six at this point.